Hey, this is Jacob Avila, 5-Minute Sono. I'm joined today by the co-fellowship and ultrasound director at the University of Tennessee, Dr. Ben Smith. Say hello. Hi. And our first ultrasound fellow, Ben Grayboys. Say hello. Hello. So what I want to do is I want to talk about this amazing case I had. So I had a patient come in. He went to his primary care doctor. He had flank pain, got a UA, and actually got appropriately diagnosed with a kidney stone mm-hmm. um, based off of the hematuria and the symptoms. He was That was about a week ago. He was doing better and then suddenly got worse. He said, today my pain came back. It's a lot worse. I just want to make sure everything was okay. Now, typically, he was uh, 45, which was kind of borderline as far as age. You get kind of concerned if they've been diagnosed with something in the past and it's not getting better or it got better and it got worse. I consider getting a CT on this guy, but I decided to just get a UA, see if he had an infection or something like that. And I went ahead and did an ultrasound of the side that was bothering him. So, uh, Ben, tell me, what do you think about this ultrasound image right here? Um, so there's probably at least some mild uh, hydronephrosis on this image. Okay, yeah, that's a, a great assessment. Now let's uh, let's move over to the – now that's the right side. Let's move over to the left side here. In order to diagnose hydronephrosis, you actually need to have a little bit of dilation of the pelvis. Uh, the, basically, the center of the kidney needs to be a little bit darker. It needs to be black because that indicates that there's fluid and a little bit of backup. And if you look on this side, the opposite side, you see that you don't have that. You have normal fat-containing pelvis there. So there's no hydro on this side, and you see hydro on the other side. All right, now let's go back to that other image one more time. So when I – have the residents do one of these renal scans. If they see black down in the renal pelvis, this dilating out from the, the white of the renal pelvis, oftentimes you may get confused looking at hydronephrosis versus vessels. Vessels can look very similar in the renal pel- pelvis. So it's useful sometimes to just throw color on there really quickly and, and see if there's any color flow in what you think might be hydronephrosis. As you can see here, there is some color flow down there, but it's not where we see the black. And so that black that's being highlighted here, that is the hydronephrosis, clearly no flow in there, um, confirming that it is, uh, that that is the collecting system. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really good point. Now with this patient, I was curious and I wanted to know if I could find the stone. Now it's difficult to find the stone when it's in the ureter, kind of in the midway between the kidney and the bladder, but occasionally we get lucky and we find this. Now what, what are we seeing here, uh, Great Voice? Um, so we're looking at the bladder here in transverse view, and you can see posterior to the bladder, right where the ureter is coming in, there's a hyperechoic round structure um, that could represent a stone. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's definitely a good point there. And if you look behind that stone, you can actually see a little bit of hydro ureter as well. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that usually when I see these, which is actually not all that common, but if I do see it, I usually see a little bit of shadowing behind it. I'm not really seeing shadowing here. Why do you think that is? Uh, it's possible that that, that that stone's just not, um, you know, going to be echo density that's going to give you a shadow. Maybe it's not a, a non-calcium stone. Sure, right on. So initially I put color flow on here to try to look for twinkling, which is a sign that's associated with actually a higher grade obstruction. I didn't really get a twinkling sign, but I put on a power Doppler here and I can actually see that this is not a completely obstructing stone. You can see a little bit of flow around it and into the bladder, uh, which is perfectly consistent with that mild hydro that we saw earlier. So what I did next is I decided to go ahead and measure it, and I measured it out at about four millimeters. So so we got all the information we need to do. There's mild hydro, it's not moderate, it's not severe, and the patient has a four millimeter stone. And we got all this within minutes of actually meeting the patient. So this patient was disposed very quickly, had a prognosis, and had a follow-up. Very important stuff, and why we do emergency ultrasound in our emergency department. That's it for this week's 5-Minute Sono. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or send me a tweet. And... As always, don't forget to subscribe. Go to blog5 slash subscribe. Put your name and your email address in little boxes and subscribe. And if looking at websites isn't your thing, you can always go to iTunes or whatever podcasting service you use and look for my podcast there. Thanks. They know that I need the right electricity to move my disco feet. They know that I need a rhythm of ecstasy to get the disco feet. Baby, give me the song that keeps rolling on that long until the break of dawn. Baby, give me the one, cause we like to get it done before tomorrow comes. So don't act, don't turn back, cause we can feel the funky groove. Baby, don't distract. Lose contact. 